Okay. I hope everyone can hear me. I have my microphone on. Yeah. Thanks, Sylvia. Thank you, Terry. Um, I'm Claudia Grobel, and along with Charlotte Beria, we have the next 30 minutes. And I don't know about all of you, but wow, and double wow, and triple wow. <laughs> However, now is the time where we've allocated 30 minutes where we want to spend this time in reflection and we want to be able to identify what we want to bring forward from this today to tomorrow and beyond. And I don't know about you, but I have several pages of notes. So um, what we'd like to do is Charlotte and I have identified the peace and power model as a framework for the next 30 minutes. In pre preparation for that, what I really would like you to do is all just sit down, take a couple of deep breaths, and then Charlotte's going to go over in about a minute or two the, the, the big items with the framework, and then we're gonna open it up for discussion. We don't have a lot of time, so we wanna give enough time so that everybody can share kind of like what bubbles forward as you're just sitting there taking a few deep breaths. So I ask you now, sit back like I am, take a deep breath, and Charlotte will take over in a few minutes, in a few seconds probably. Thank you, Claudia. So um, this is Charlotte Barry. And uh, as Claudia said, we're going to use uh, Peggy Chin's model for closing. And um, we're evocateurs again, and so we're just gonna present to you and want you to share your ideas. So um, the first part of of Chin's Peace and Power is an affirmation. To um, appreciate something or someone that was, uh, that you experienced today. And the second part is a critical reflection on the processes today in this dialogue. And the third is a, uh, an affirmation of a commitment to continue uh, with this work. Uh, Peggy Chin calls this a closing, and we are closing today, but we are continuing tomorrow. So with that, we'll just um, open up the floor. Um, we've heard a lot today about finding joy and also finding caring in others. And so anyone who would like to share, uh, feel free, feel free to listen, feel free to share. Can you, I'm sorry. Can you just can you just state the state the statements again? I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Um, the first one is an appreciation for someone or something that you experienced today. Okay. And these are these are just a framework. We we don't have to stick to any of this. Uh, the okay. Is a critical reflection um, that brings the group some constructive insights and the processes experienced today. Okay. And the third one is uh, an affirmation uh, to a commitment to continue with, with this work tomorrow. Tomorrow and the future. I'd say tomorrow and forever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to raise my hand. I, I didn't get a hand to raise, so is it okay if I just go ahead and talk? Just I jump also, in, Sue. Jump in. React, sit you on just the reactions the on the bottom. The Sue, appreciation. The on the bottom? You put your hand up. That's on all. the bottom, yeah, but I don't have that. I, know, I, don't know. I can't. It's there, but I, oh, reactions. Gotcha. Reactions. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. But I do want to thank everybody. That, 
Uh, but, appreciate but we recognize your hand not being up and please speak. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. Um, I just want to appreciate uh, Terry and, um, oh gosh, uh, it's not, it's uh, Sylvia. I'm <laughs> for helping us and keeping us on track and, and having the provocative questions. And I wanna thank everybody for your um, powerful responses and how, I mean, you can just tell how um, this whole year, year and a half has made such an impact on everybody emotionally, spiritually, physically, intellectually. It's, it's incredible and I, I do appreciate how everyone's been so open and um and and it is you know terry and sylvia did a great job i thought and i just want to appreciate them thank you sue this is dawn i just want to say that um I really appreciated the company and the dialogue today. You know, a lot of conferences we attend, we have speakers presenting, mm -hmm. um, but today our voices were heard. Um, we, so it was a whole participatory event and I really enjoyed it. Um, affirmation to continue. I um, hope that we can do a call to action for the mental health care for nurses. I think it's really important with or without the pandemic. I worked for many years in a neonatal intensive care unit um, where there were a lot of um, anguish, uh, you know, as babies died or caring for parents. And so I think caring for nurses' mental health is really important. It's something that should be valued. <clears throat> this is Marlene and- um, John. Um, I want to follow up with what Don um, just said in, in regards to appreciating um, the dialogue that we had today. Um, in particular, the whole concept of joy and sorrow um, that really woke me up, you know, that conversation. And um, I just wanted to add to it the idea of people spoke with courage mm -hmm. and there was hope. And um, so I would like to give that as an af affirmation that um, within this whole the oasis of joy, there is hope, there is courage, there is kindness. So when you put it all together, you know, after a while, the, um, we find meaning in whatever is going on in our life, and that's what brings the joy. Marlene. Thank you. I'll go next. Um, oh, I'm not on mute, am I? Okay. Um, I want to appreciate that we're here. We're together. Even if it has to be virtually, that we're all here together to focus on moving forward. My critical reflection um, is the profound impact the last year and a, and a half has had on us individually and the people we work with. And it's, it's just particularly in the last section, the pain, the suffering that has occurred in all of us in one way or another. And, and we have all been influenced and we, we will never be the same. So my hope for continuing this work is now, how do we start talking about moving forward? Mm -hmm. How do we begin to heal, not only ourselves, but the people we care for and, and the people that we work with and lead. So that is now our, our goal and task is let, how do we begin to do the healing and moving forward in this new world um, and focusing on nursing and caring. Thank you, Claire. Savina, did you have your hand up? Yes. 
Thanks. Uh, the floor acknowledges Savina. <laughs> I'm surprised you can see my hand from this distance, but yes, it was up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going back to the first hour, the first part of this of today. And I just, there's so much that I want to express appreciation for, but in this moment, I'm just going to express appreciation to Mary Ellen and also to Mary O'Connor and to whichever twin it was that spoke about, I'm going to say, the creepiness of professionalism, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the stiffness. Uh, and I'm so happy to hear that acknowledged. And uh, we know there's value in professional values. But I think there's also value in the recognition that uh, we are people. We may be members of a profession but we are human beings, we're persons, and everyone with whom we work and for whom we work, we're all persons. And healthcare setting is uh, a personal setting. So, uh, and I appreciate Mary Ellen for bringing that out. Thank you. Thank you, Savina. I'd, I'd like to, um, this is Joma, I would like to um, appreciate and as well as to commit, um, I don't think you can separate these, these, these questions and to talk about the fact that even, even using um, a Zoom platform, the experience that I have had of being connected and having dialogue with people who are willing and able and present is an experience that you don't usually get at least on you don't sometimes you don't get it in person but online one of the, the it became real to me when i when i was mentoring the fau student graduate student and she worked in a covid unit and she talked just like joseph what you said she mentioned all the things that you mentioned but one of the things she said was that how do you help nurses learn how to be authentic when they're on Zoom and they've never been, they're not, they're not the chaplain or they're not psychiatric nurses or they haven't had the opportunity to have to go through all this death and dying and suffering. And we talked about that. And I am so appreciative of, of the fact that we have lived this experience of connection by being present even on a Zoom platform. So I thank you and I'm committed to finding ways to help other people. Um, I wanna be part of, continue to be part of this. This is my first academy. I have never been on one of these before. Been to a lot of lectures, a lot of online lectures and I told myself that to the last one, I said, I think I'm done with all the input. I need dialogue. So I want to thank everybody. I think this, this mechanism is an important one. And I think in some way it has to be incorporated, um, even on Zoom, to show that you don't have to be present to touch someone. I mean, present in person. Thank you. That was a lovely ending. Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> Charlotte, this is Nancy France. I thought I put my hands. I think I'm technologically challenged. <laughs> um, it may be there, but I have, I don't have everyone on the screen. Sorry. Okay. Well, um, you know, Oh, this time of day is always exhausting and emotional, you know, because we have just been so engaged all day long. And there is so much appreciation, gratitude, but what I feel now as a result of this day is the love that we have 
for our professional <clears throat> discipline for each other and for our nurses, all of our nurses. It's the nurse to nurse caring. It's the nurse to nurse love. And that's what I'm feeling at this time. So I'm definitely moving forward with this. Thank you, Nancy. Charlotte, this is Mary Ellen. And I just want to thank Kathleen for allowing us to experience with her, um, her emotion. And I think that you expressed Kathleen for a lot of us, how deep and emotional these conversations can be and, and how deep and emotional all of these situations of caring can be. And so I just wanted to thank you for, for allowing us to see and feel that emotion. Thank you, Mary Ellen. I think some of you had put um, some comments in the chat, but if you would share them with us um, uh, through your voice, it would, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. I've looked at the chat as well, Charlotte, and there are a few that may want to speak now that have been quiet. I would just like to speak up and say, um, my name is Barbara Goff with Notre Dame of Maryland, and just how wonderful it has been to be in this, this same space with all of you and to hear your, your, your thoughts and your your ways of being with one another. I, um, I've been inspired to continue and um, be part of this group and, um, you know, just continue to learn. And, um, and hopefully tomorrow I will be willing to share a, a few more of my thoughts and ideas. But today I just wanted to listen and just let you know how much I appreciate it and how very valuable and informative it's been today. Thank you, Barbara. Charlotte, I'll go. Oh. Mary. I don't really know where to begin to, to share my appreciation, but I think that if I have to say one thing, I would like to go back to the definition of being a leader that Marlene shared that a leader helps others live what matters most. And, <clears throat> and I think that the, the process of the, of the sharing, of listening to Joe and Carolyn's story this afternoon, and really witnessing that mm -hmm. uh, just really threw me into all kinds of soul stirrings, I feel. Um, I think this last year, so many of you know, and Charlotte, you know, that I lost my husband about a year ago, right as the pandemic was really at its height. Mm -hmm. And for me, my experience of the pandemic was my, my grief of losing John. And then as I was listening to Joe talking about going around to 14 hospitals and all that was going on. I had this, this overwhelming feeling of guilt that how could I have felt so bad? And yet my, my grief is so tied up with that. And at the same time, like laying over the, how do we create an ongoing oasis of joy? And certainly my experience has been that joy and suffering are are just side by side. In fact, the deepest joy allows for the deepest sorrow and vice versa, I believe. So uh, that just really, it's true. kind of just really trying to, I think sometimes we don't create the oasis of joy, but we like, we uncover and find out that it's there. But sometimes that can just be so covered over with, with all of the difficulty and suffering. Um, and I think that this process of the academy 
is the very process that will allow this to happen as we move forward. You know, rather than a list of things, I think this process really is what helps transformation to be possible. And however we can do it, I'm in. <laughs> I was so moved also um, by the Synergy Twins that I actually wrote a poem today in between. Oh. Right, maybe I'll share that tomorrow. Oh, Ooh. yeah, please. Oh. Thank, so you, thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Charlotte? Yes. Well, people are taking a few moments, I think, trying to compose any last minute thoughts and such. Perhaps I could take a moment and review what I've captured. And maybe if I've missed something, somebody could then correct me or add to it. Because I've got a list of probably about 12 different things that are important, I think, to remind us as we move forward. What do you think? Sure. Okay. Um, I think I've heard that we need a call to action for mental health for nurses. Um, I've heard several times about the concept of joy and sorrow being um, intertwined. Today in the meaning of courage and hope and all of the emotion. Um, that even being virtual, we all felt connected, which to me is huge because we are all in different places, um, that there is a need to figure out how to move forward with healing and that the definite, we need to remind ourselves of the definition of leaders. Leaders help each other live what matters most. Is there anything else that people are thinking about as they look through appreciation, critical reflection or affirmation as we wrap up this evening? this afternoon. I see Kathleen wants to share. Kathleen? Capo, your hand, it looks like your hand is up. Kathleen Capo. Yes. This Kathleen? I, I think I'm Capo. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know my hand was up, but I will speak. <laughs> okay. Um, today's been wonderful. I'm appreciative for all the leaders that are here because you all are leaders, scholarly, nursing, academics, uh, we're all leaders here. And um, I think that I've learned that uh, to advance sharing science, not only do we have to take care of self, but we now, now we're at a place where we know we have to say, sustain caring for nurses. And I, I'm hearing this over and over, and I think um, it's, it's, it's so profound. And what I hear from my students who have lived this pandemic, and it was through them, and I, I, I felt guilty that I wasn't at the bedside, but I knew that I was in a place where I needed to be. And I think that I helped them uh, process uh, what they were going through, through the work we, we've done in courses. So. Um, I think it's important too that we sustain um, this movement of nurses caring for nurses by through caring science. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the wisdoms that I wrote down was that nurses need to initiate conversations about what nurses need and not to wait uh, from, from one of our of the nurse administrators who last spoke uh, to um, Joe, I forget her name. But it was nurses giving voice to what nurses need. Thank you, Zane. Not me, it's, it's the wisdom, right? It's the wisdom. Well, thank, you for, thank you for sharing. Charlotte? Yes. I just wanted to go back again to what Nancy said about love and love 
you know, love is to feel. Um, I think today we heard so many beautiful responses that were loving. People put forth a lot of their vulnerability, their courageousness. Um, it just was a wonderful day of connecting with each other in a very special place. And so I really appreciate everyone truly being present today. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. I'm going to speak and I'd like to um, share appreciation with uh, Joe and with uh, Anne Marie in particular. Joe, I have used the article you published with Sue Wolf and, and I think Dr. Boykin years ago with my students forever. And it's always been um, a great way for them to understand caring in a hospital setting. So I want to thank you for that as well as for sharing today. And I particularly want to thank Anne Marie for raising the issue of I think you actually did a little counseling and debriefing with all of us, Anne Marie, today. I want to thank you for that and to highlight the need for us to, um, to do that with nurses. So thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, Charlotte, very much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Barry. I'd like to just say that actually I answered my own question and that through this and through this experience today um, with all of you, the, this is what I signed up for. And I'm going to carry that message back to the hospitals. This is nursing. This is the essence of being human. And I didn't realize it until all of you shared with me. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Yes, Mary. I was just going to say these these are the things that bring me joy that fill my soul that make me feel um, the most reward as a nurse and as a nurse leader. And um, I just can't help but wonder how we can bring this feeling to the larger audience. Um, and I will, I am so committed to being here tomorrow. No question. Thank you, Mary. Okay, I just laughed. I read in the chat room with Savina. Savina, I owe you a hug. And I agree. I was thinking the same thing, my appreciation. We did find the magic today in all our humanness and all our emotion um, in sharing. And that it goes back to me is that we are all in the right place at the right time to be here and have these conversations and feel safe and vulnerable, but yet committed. At the end of the day, we're still committed to making the world better and essence of nursing for me. 
Anything else you'd like to add, Charlotte, before we close for the day? And so the journey continues tomorrow. Have a good day, everyone. Mm -hmm. Pretend that you're at my house having a uh, nice buffet and soak in the pool with your oh, yeah. candies. And um, um, we'll next see. year, we're holding you to it next year. Okay. <laughs> we missed that, Charlotte. We really did. I know. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank Have you. A great night. Any last minute words from Terry or Kathleen before we sign off? Well, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And I think that if you can, um, if we can be together facially, uh, too, that that helps, uh, helps to be connected. And to, for us as, as evocateurs, to be able to see, even if you don't raise your hand, you know, using the little thing that we can see when you're ready to speak and um, <laughs> and and help to invite your comments so um i think that if you feel comfortable that's what we would like thank you kathleen terry did you have some closing remarks i think you're shaking no. you're muted Anne? I think we're done. We're done. Good Fine. night, everyone. Good night. Bye, Thank, everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Sleep well. Sleep well. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, See you tomorrow morning. Bye. 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 Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Great job, you guys. Yep. Bye, Sue. Thank you, Sue. Thank you to everyone.